So I'm getting ready to do an unboxing for a book that I've been waiting for for a, a while and that I've really wanted and I'm glad to add to my collection. Um, but as a sort of a preamble to this constitution, if you will, um, at the end of the video, check it out. I'm going to put some pictures. I'm going to put a variety of pictures up and see how this goes. I've never done this part of it before, but stay tuned. See if you like it. If you really want some good pictures, I'll try to get you some at the end of the video. Thank you. Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got an eBay unboxing. I'm going to be taking a look at Richard Matheson's I Am Legend. If you've uh, if you've tuned in on previous videos, you'll have seen that I've done I've done other videos about uh, I Am Legend, Richard Matheson. I've done other previous unboxings from the author, and I did a review slash unboxing uh, video. Uh, where I showed uh, Sun Tup Editions, multiple versions of I Am Legend, as well as the Gauntlet Press signed and limited version of I Am Legend. And a big gaping, huge gaping hole, a mall in my collection, uh, has been the Folio Society edition of I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. Well, eBay and an eBay seller hooked me up, and I'm hoping for the best. This seller ship the box book in what i consider to be a good packaging in a box um this was advertised as new unread condition so obviously i'm expecting primo on my book and this is one that i'm excited excited this is what i'm excited about because it looks so doggone good the folio society version of this book just looks too sweet and um i've been wanting it for a while I just didn't want to get my pants pulled down over the price. Well, I found one at the price I wanted that was quoted in the condition I was looking for, and I can't wait to take a look and see and get it on the shelf. So why am I taking so long and beating around the bush? Because, um, I don't know, it's just what I do. So let's take a look, see what I got, see how she turned out, and see if this was a big fail or a big win. And I'm hoping for a big win, although fails are key words that people look for. Uh, first of all, it takes a person knowing how to open a box. Well, this pack, this seller used, what is this tape? This kind of tape. They used a bunch of it. There was no way on God's green earth that this book was going to be exposed to the elements. If there's one thing in this world that I hate... Is people selling stuff, packing it up in a way that's not going to protect it and not going to take care of it along the way. And this seller here, whose name I will withhold, although Mr. has a very awesome last name. I wish I had a last name like this. I won't tell you who it is. Why, I don't know. I don't know why. They might like, uh, if it's a good experience, they might like their, their name spread around as quality. Look here, I'm not going to cut myself. And I don't want to cut through my book. But this tape is bad to the bone. I have to get me some of this stuff here. Because it's unbeatable. Alright, we've got we've got our book packed in a, a plastic uh, covering the top, I guess, to help prevent um, a puncture or something like that. Got some packing peanuts on the, along the sides. And it looks like a bandage or something. Did I buy a book from a medical professional? I could use this stuff. I don't know if this is for uh, uh, leaks or uh, for bandaging or what. But I need to save this junk. I don't know how clean it is, but it, um, it could come in handy if I'm uh, out in the woods and get wounded or something along those lines. And I tend to spend a lot of time in the woods on good days when I get the opportunity. That's why I read paperbacks. You can stuff one of them mugs in your pocket and you don't worry about uh, the consequences. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. I got uh, bubble wrap wrapped around my book. I say packaging tip top. This person hooked me up, did the job, did the J-O-B for me. Uh, a lot of tape. And this uh, sometimes... When, uh, when you tape stuff up, you're making sure that your packaging stays good. But the, but the buyer then whines and cries because they got to try to get all this tape off without damaging their, their precious, their most wonderful collectible. Anyway, I'm not crying. 
I'm just looking like a fool who can't uh, open up a package. Man, that looks good. I don't know if I even want to show this. This book looks so good, uh, at least on the spine. It looks so good. And, and what is my opinion, maybe the best looking version of this book is the Folio Society book. And uh, why I don't already have one, it's, it's a shame. It's a crime. It's, uh, it's sadness. How can I call myself a fan and a collector? And I don't already have one of these. And why is it taking so long to open the thing? Uh, come on, man. Get this joker open. Stop running your lips. Get the package open. And uh, don't be an idiot. Hey, tear that stuff. It's Christmas, and I'm a child. I'm a children on Christmas. Don't preserve the wrapping paper. But I don't want to mess up my slipcase. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. See ya, babe. They got a, you got a die cut slip case, which is one of the neat features of this. I am, what? I am, I am. Oh, okay. I get it. I am. Uh, so we got our, gosh, that spine just looks so good, man. I'm, I'm excited. This is one that I want. So my slip case does not look damaged in the least. The way they packaged it for shipping it stands to reason that it would have, wouldn't have been damaged in shipping. Great job for this seller. Uh, I'm a big fan. Now, one thing that's interesting, I didn't know it until now, the odd shape of this book. It is, it's a rectangle, like most books are, but it's very rectangular. What do they call it when the long sides of a rectangle are very, very long? This one is long, long-sided rectangle. You see how it's tall? Maybe, uh, Maybe slight, about the right height, but a narrow book, narrow this way. Um, but anyway, there's our cover, and man, does it look good. And the spine just looks great, man. I showed you what it looked like in the slipcase. And here's the back. The artwork on the back of the cover just looks phenomenal. Now, I don't know if I've never seen it or never noticed it, but this, this is a bit of a surprise to me. I didn't expect it to look like this. Um... And the front is a is a artwork that I have seen and what I was expecting. But I'm in awe. Oh. Uh, Folio Society is a publisher that I really dig. Publisher out of the UK. Um, I don't know if they would be a limited edition publisher. Probably not. They have. I'm sure they have very large print runs when they do print. But they make a quality book, and in many cases, they make phenomenal looking books. A book that you're going to put on the shelf and people are going to see it. There's there's editions of, and this this may be one. When I show you the Sun Tup Editions numbered edition of I Am Legend, which I truly love, it's a special one to me. But I take that one off the shelf and I take this off the shelf and I show them to just any old body. They're going to say this one looks better. Um, now this one is made of far cheaper materials and some people are going to appreciate that Sun Tup Edition book more. When I look at it on the shelf, just the simplicity, elegant uh, simplicity of the design. I really love that. It's one of my favorite books on my shelves. But this is an eye-catching, awesome-looking book. And that's what Folio Society does a lot of times. Honestly, they make some books that I... Yeah, what's that guy on the Facebook? I cringe when I see him. But then they make a lot of books that when I see them, they're jaw-dropping, awesome-looking books. And this is one of them. So I'm a big fan of the Folio Society. I don't buy all their books, but when they publish books that I like and I want to add to my collection, I'm buying them. I've bought uh, five, six, seven, I don't know. I bought a handful of books from them, and then I've also bought a handful of books off of the secondary market of theirs. One thing I've noticed with the Folio Society is if you can buy it from them, you're probably going to get it cheaper than you will if you wait till it goes out of print and then try buying it on the secondary market. I don't know why that is, but it seems like sometimes it's hard to find a good deal, and this is an example of one of them. It took me a long time before I could find the price for the book that was in the condition that I wanted, and uh, one other caveat that I was looking for that we'll check on this, um, so I could find the, the right one for me, and this was it. And luckily, nobody beat me to it. I beat, I'm the one that beat them to it. Uh, so... Nothing, uh, nothing fancy here. Some green end papers. If I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, sometimes I struggle with these colors. Uh, color blindness uh, is uh, is an affliction of mine. That's why I'm not a fighter pilot. If it wasn't for color blindness, I would have been a fighter pilot and the best you ever saw. Um, but that's that's what I am. Me and bubbles. 
Uh, okay, all right, so here's what I'm looking for. Looking for the title page, is that what it's called? Looking for the title page and uh, some, some neat artwork here. And I'm looking for the title page because I'm hoping that the very next page I'll find out, did I get a first print of this book or not? Did I get a first print? That's what I was wanting. The seller didn't specify, but they showed a picture of this title page and nowhere on the title page does it say second print or third print or anything like that. Now, I don't know if they made a second print or third print. I'm pretty sure they did, but it's not stated here. And if it is, let me know because I'm too dumb to notice it. I don't see it. I don't see it listed there, which would mean, which would indicate I got a first print, which is what I wanted. Most of the time, Folio Society collectors say, I don't care if it's a first print or an eighth print because the Folio Society book is printed decades and decades after the true first print of the book. So who, why does it matter? But as a book collector, I started out looking for books in my early infancy as a book collector. I wanted true first edition first print books. And while you get into all these uh, specialty publications and stuff like that, that are published long after the book came out, limited editions and stuff, those habits still kind of, or those desires or wants or that, uh, that, that benefit, that feature is still something that kind of clings and I kind of still want it. So if there's an option between buying something that's a first print or something that's going to say second print or third print or fourth print, I'm going to try to get that first print and usually I'll pay a little bit more for it or wait a little bit longer to try to get it. Not all of my folios are first prints, but when I have the opportunity, I go for it. And when I find out one that I bought as a first print, I'm more excited. It feels a little bit more special to me. Um, I know a lot of people aren't that way. Now, this one, else, this one here has an uh, introduction written by Joe Hill, illustrations by Dave McKean. Now, I haven't read the introduction. I read the book, but I haven't read the introduction by Joe Hill. So uh, that, that uh, we'll figure out how great he did there. Sure, he did well. Uh, but illustrations by Dave McKean, what I've seen so far... Dave McKean did some special work for this book. Man, the picture so far looks good. Look good. Let me find some more. Here's uh, here's some more illustrations. I don't want to... It's a new... Like binding is stiff, so I'm not opening it up all the way and stretching it out for you. But I'll make some allowances to help try to show you what this book looks like. I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell, but right now, opening this book, seeing that it is exactly what I was hoping it would be, and knowing that I got it at a price that was maybe a price that was less than I would have paid for it. But when it comes to buy it now, you uh, you find one, you jump all over it. And I don't say, hey, uh, seller, I would have paid an extra 30 bucks for this book. You want to just up it on me? I don't do that. But um, I'm not trying to rip somebody off. But when they have a buy it now that's lower than what I'm willing to pay, I'm going to buy it now. And I'm going to take it home and I'm going to be happy with what I got. Um, that being said, I think I might have paid 50 bucks, around $50 for this book. Um, I, somewhere around there. Maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> but I, I want to say that's something around what I paid for it. Less than I probably would have been willing to pay for this particular book. But that's what they asked, and that's what I bite it now for. Just looking through some of this artwork. Folio Society... Um, and a lot of their books, especially their modern era publishings, they do put, uh, they do tend to put a lot of, uh, a lot of great, uh, artwork in their books. And I'm failing at trying to find it all, but I'm looking for some of these pictures here. Uh, great artwork, great book. If you haven't read I Am Legend, read it. I suggest you read it. Strongly suggest you read it. One of the problems that I've always suffered with is books where I've seen the movie. In an I Am Legend, I've seen, I think, every version of this movie. Um, my favorite probably would be the, uh, the Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price. That one I liked a lot. I like the feel of the movie. I don't know. And it's probably, if of the three movies, it's the closest to the book. Not exactly like the book. Um, not a faithful rendition, but of the three, I'd say it's the closest to the book. Um, but I liked that one the best, but I liked, uh, Omega Man with Charlton Heston also. I liked that movie a lot as a standalone movie compared to nothing. I liked that movie a lot. 
Um, but if you're going to compare that to the book, it is very, very different. And then finally, the one movie that has the title, I Am Legend, uh, with Will Smith, was a good movie that I liked. But it was a very, very different than this book. Uh, only somewhat recognizable at, at all. Uh, so that's my thought on the movies. This is not a movie rendition. But I was talking about movies because some of us have the tendency to say, I've seen the movie, why do I want to read the book? And I'll tell you this, none of those movies are like the book. Um, the Last Man on Earth being the closest of them, but very different still. When you read this book, some of it's going to feel familiar and some of it's going to feel unfamiliar. And that's, that's a neat feeling when you think you know the story, but as you go, you start to be surprised. You start to wonder, how's this going to turn out? When you already thought you knew what was going to happen, and now you're now you're wondering what's going to happen. That's that's a neat feeling in a, in a when you're reading a book. It's not a very long book, I don't remember, but I think uh, I think the copy I read was 170 ish pages, and it looks like this one, chapter 21. It looks like in this Folio Society version, we're at 185 pages at the end. So it's a it's a quick read. Um, I recommend reading it if you're, if you're, if you haven't read it because of the movies, maybe you loved the movies, you loved one of them, you hated them all, whatever. I still recommend the book. This book is going to surprise you if you've, uh, if you've studied those movies inside and out, you're going to have some surprises. You're going to have some, uh, some questions as you read along on what happens next. But, uh, as far as that goes, that's, uh, that's about all I can say. Those are about all the lies I can tell. I like it, eBay seller with a cool last name fella. You hooked me up, I appreciate it, thank you. Um, hooked, took care of the, the packaging, sent me a good book, exactly as described. Uh, that's all I got. If I'm forgetting something, I'm sorry. So, say la vie, baby.